Hello, Malcolm. Hey, Leo. How you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm fantastic. I just want to say I've been a longtime follower since G4 TV days, and uh, this is my first time calling in. That's ironic because the guy who ran G4 TV on Rogers was named Malcolm. Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. Small world. I, know. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can I do for you? Um, so I'm in the uh, market for a Chromebook, and um, I actually... You picked a good time, my friend. Yes, it's uh, it's been a long time coming. I had a laptop for six years, and uh, it, I... Funny story, I sat on it. Oh, no. Uh, it, was, it was in my book bag, and uh, I sat down with the book bag on, and it cracked the screen. Yeah, uh, that'll happen. Anyway. Do you want yeah. do you want a Chromebook that will never do that? <laughs> <laughs> I want a Chromebook that will do my taxes and pay my bills. Okay. As long as you do your taxes and pay your bills online, that's no problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, you could be by the way, you use a spreadsheet and there are many online spreadsheets. Google of course has Sheets, part of its Google uh, Docs. But uh, yeah. Microsoft's Excel is also online. So, you could you could, you know, use a spreadsheet but it'd be, but ideally, you'd use an online, uh, you know, something like TurboTax. I don't know what they use in Canada, but there are online tax preparation programs. They're simpler yeah. than the than the the big ones, you know, the software ones. And then, but nowadays, everybody's moving their software to the cloud, to the internet. Yeah. And so there's, yeah. that's why a Chromebook can start to make sense. And not only that, it's also simple because of the fact that it's all web based and um, simple to use. Light on storage, very light. Yep. Uh, yep. Light, it's um, inexpensive as a result. They're much yes. more secure. Chromebooks are designed in such a way that nobody can modify the operating system. It won't start up if the, if somebody bad has modified the operating system. And if it won't start up because of that, you do what's called a power wash, and it goes right mm -hmm. back to the way it was. And because you're not really storing data locally, you just log into your Google account, and all of a sudden, it's exactly the way it was. That's a real advantage. The, right. the disadvantage, there are two disadvantages to Chromebooks. One, of course, is if you're not online, there's a much more limited set of things you can do. You, right. You know, there's offline Gmail and stuff that'll download your Gmail or your Chromebook, and, you, you know, you can write messages, but they won't be sent until you're online. It's really designed to be online, although increasingly we're online all the time, even in airplanes these days. Yes, absolutely. The second, uh, the second negative, of course, is you can't run standalone programs like if you wanted to use Adobe Photoshop or Premiere oh, Elements yeah. to edit video, I mean, you have to use everything you use has to run in Chrome, the browser. Yeah. And and I have a desktop for that, so uh, oh, it's perfect. I, I play yeah. play video games and uh, any other software, uh, heavy intensive software. I would use my desktop exactly. But uh, in in essence, I would use a Chromebook as I'm on the road and uh, like to get something done quickly. And it'll automatically save it to the cloud. And then once I go back to my house, I can uh, access uh, my Google Drive and uh, do whatever, continue from there. Um, and the reason I'm, I'm looking for a Chromebook is because of school. Um, and um, and I was watching one of your shows, uh, one that you did yesterday, uh, and I sort of missed it. But you were talking about the Pixie Chromebook, I think it was. Well, this is Google's now. This is the one I use, and of course, my co-host uh, Ian Thompson of the Register also uses it. These are expensive, um, but they're the best Chromebooks. <laughs> uh, right. Google makes them, and you can get them from the Google Store at store.google.com. Uh, and Google makes them mostly to show that you, the Chromebook doesn't have to be a low-powered, inexpensive device. It can be a high-end, powerful device. One reason to think about the Pixel is because Google has announced that they're going to add the Android Store to Chromebooks in September. And okay. uh, you have to look at the list of Chromebooks that will support. Eventually, I think it will support all the new Chromebooks. I think any Chromebook you buy today, for instance, will work. But out of the box, it's only going to support three of them, one of which is that Chromebook Pixel. So right. the And by the way, the Pixel was the one I was going to mention. Even if you sat on it, the thing is built like a truck. You probably wouldn't crack the screen. It has a very nice touch screen, but it's a thousand dollars. It's expensive, uh, so it's yeah. you know it's a high-end Chromebook. Now it's the one I use, and I really love it. But I would also look at there are mid-range. So Chromebooks, 
range in price from $150 to $1,299, depending on what you want to get. The most expensive are those Google Pixels. Um, the least expensive come from Acer, lots of companies, Asus. There's also mid-range Chromebooks made out of metal, good-looking, fast processors. Dell, HP, and Acer have all announced those, and most of them are coming in the next few weeks. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.